everybody and welcome to the fourth in a series of videos where I cover not only my Godzilla collection but also the DVD and Blu-ray releases of the entire series. Keep in mind that this is the region one releases of this so I won't be covering things like the Japanese releases or the European releases just to keep things quick and clean. If you've been following me thus far, then thank you for sticking around and hopefully you've been finding these enjoyable. Uh, if not, and this is your first video, like I said, this is the fourth, so you can watch the other ones. I'll include a link somewhere at the very least in the description down below. So in this video, I'll be covering the current Godzilla films as well as where they're projected to be heading in the immediate future. I've heard these distinctively being referred to as the Rewa era and the Hollywood Monsterverse movies, but I'm just going to be covering them all in one fail swoop here, so let's just get right into it. So after finishing Godzilla Final Wars, Toho basically said they weren't going to be making another Godzilla movie for like 10 years. Even TriStar, who made the 98 Godzilla, let their rights expire in 2003, so it looked like that was going to be it for a while. Luckily, close to the end of 2004, Yoshi Mitsubano, the director of Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster, announced that he had acquired the rights to Godzilla from Toho and wanted to make a 3D IMAX short film with it. At first it was going to be like a remake of vs. the Smog Monster, and then over the years it was decided to be kind of a sequel instead. It then struggled to get funding for years until in 2010, Legendary Pictures expressed interest but wanted to make it a full feature instead and more of their own thing. This turned into the 2014 Godzilla, which I really enjoy. I think the intro is the strongest point, which sucked me right in and features like a nuclear meltdown of sorts. It's very cool. This one doesn't have as strong or obvious of an anti-nuclear message as some of the other Godzillas, but I can tell it was made with the utmost respect for the original. I mean, Yoshimitsu Bano stayed on as a producer, and the director Gareth Edwards has said that he was most focused on the movie doing well in Japan, since that's where the character's from. There's new monsters introduced in this one called the Mutos, which I know not everyone is crazy about, but I like them. They remind me a little of like Orga from Godzilla 2000 mixed with like a stealth plane. Now this got a few Blu-ray releases in 2014, but it's mostly just variant packaging like, you know, a Target exclusive or a Steelbook. It's all the same discs. The coolest set looks like a Japan exclusive, which actually does come with extra discs, and a figure, which looks really cool. Uh, the Blu-ray I have here is pretty standard in packaging, and the discs don't have any remarkably distinguishing characteristics between the two. But it also included some art cards, which is pretty nice. The menu is pretty bland, run-of-the-mill Blu-ray menu, but at least it has one, and it's full of behind-the-scenes features. Both the how we made this kind, and the like short film, let's show more of the story kind. This can retail anywhere between $10 to $20. So after the success of the 2014 Godzilla, Toho decided it was about time to do another Godzilla film in Japan. I mean, it had been about 10 years, so the check's out. So production began on what would later become Shin Godzilla, which was released in 2016. This was directed by Hideki Anno and Shinji Higuchi, both known primarily for their work on Neon Genesis Evangelion. I managed to see this one in the theater and loved it. Where the original draws inspiration from Hiroshima, this one draws inspiration from the Fukushima disaster. So Godzilla shows up and is just continuously evolving, making the situation worse and worse. Each time the government holds a meeting to try and decide what should be done rather than immediately acting. This is a clear commentary on the Japanese government and makes for a very different and interesting watch. I highly recommend it. As far as Blu-rays and DVDs go, it only got one release over here by Funimation, which I have. I like the case for it, the black box is a nice change from the standard blue ones, and the DVD and Blu-ray discs are nice and different from one another. The menus also go the extra distance of being different from the standard Blu-ray release. My only gripe is the special features, which this one only has one. It features some workers from Funimation at a table talking about the movie and the series. So there's really no like behind the scenes video or like a featurette showing like the production process, just none of it. Which the only reason I find that frustrating is I've seen clips of behind the scenes of this. Like, the impressive thing with Shin Godzilla is there was a lot of practical effects mixed with CG, and it's really hard to tell most of the time when one cuts to another, so I was really excited to see at least some of this, but none of it is included. 
There's also some random movie trailers and it does come with the option to watch it either sub or dub. So overall, it's a pretty good release. I just wish there was a little bit more behind the scenes featurettes. It also usually retails around the $20 area. So as per the agreement between Toho and Legendary, Toho can't release a live action Godzilla the same year that Legendary is planning to do one. So to get around that, while Legendary is working on Kong Skull Island, Toho releases three animated Godzilla films on Netflix. Now these movies are quite different. Personally, I'm not a fan of anime that's done in 3D and then is rendered to have like 2D like shading. So I had a hard time looking past the style just on a personal level. Story-wise, there's a lot of interesting ideas. The main point is Godzilla showed up and humans had to abandon Earth only to return like 20,000 years later. And by that time, Godzilla has evolved and the planet has regressed to suit those kinds of monsters. So like I said, there's a lot of really cool ideas in all three of these. My main complaint is that I felt like these dragged a lot. Like the first movie is all set up that I just explained, at least for the most part. These never got a region one home release, but they're still available to check out via Netflix if you can. So the next movie to come out was Godzilla King of the Monsters in 2019. I did a full in-depth review of this already right after watching in the theater, so if you haven't seen that, feel free to check it out. Overall though, I'll say it featured excellent music, a lot more cool monster fights than the first, but the human storyline kinda sucked. So take from that what you will. So again, similar to the 2014 movie, this got a few different Blu-ray releases, but they were all mostly case variants, aside from the Japan exclusives, which again looks super cool. I just picked up the standard Blu-ray DVD release, which is all right and quite colorful. The discs are also physically different looking, but are just different shades of blue. The menus are also that standard Blu-ray template, so nothing noteworthy here. There are a ton of behind the scenes featurettes and trailers of the movie, but one thing I noticed is there's like no footage from the original films in these behind the scenes featurettes, which is weird since in the 2014 set there was actually clips from the original used in the behind the scenes. I don't know if there's any significance to that, uh, I just felt the need to mention it because I noticed it and thought it was weird. It almost feels like, you know, Toho accepts the 2014 one and is like, you know, this new one is different. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into it. And that's pretty much it for all the current Godzilla movies out. As for where it's going, um, there's going to be the Hollywood Godzilla vs. Kong. All I know so far is it's being directed by someone named Adam Wingard. Um, he directed the 2016 Blair Witch and the 2017 Death Note. So I'll reserve my thoughts until I see a trailer. Well, since recording this, a trailer was released. So here are my thoughts on it. Overall, the monsters are looking really good in this. It's looking like we've got some really cool monster fights in store for us when this comes out. I am a little bit concerned still about how the humans like, are going to be in this because like, again, we didn't get some very strong character arcs in Godzilla King of the Monsters. So if it's more of that, I'm going to be a little bit let down, but there is some hints uh, that there maybe possibly could be some Mecha Godzilla happening in here. So I remain hopeful for that. Uh, plus, I mean, you know, toy leaks and all that, but that could mean nothing. Who knows? So I remain optimistic, but still just a little bit, I don't want to say skeptical. I'm, I'm just, I'm excited for these monster fights. I'm excited to see Kong again. I'm excited to see those two clash. I'm just keeping a little bit of a, of a, a low bar in terms of how the story's going to go. So I can only be pleased with this. As for the Japanese Toho movies, I was really excited to see a sequel to Shin Godzilla. Without spoiling anything, it does leave it open for the possibility of there being a sequel. So I was really curious to see where that would go. But apparently the plan is to just reboot the series to do its own thing. They said they wanted to do like a, a, a monster universe similar to what Marvel is doing with their universe, which I kind of laughed when I read that because they already kind of did that in my mind, didn't they? Like they already had Godzilla monsters crossing over with one another and having their own series. Like I get that it's probably going to be a little bit more interconnected, but I, it still makes me chuckle. It's kind of like how when Universal was really pushing the dark universe, like they're like, finally the monsters 
will cross paths and it'll be a joint universe. And I was like, man, what a crazy idea. I like, why did it take this long to come up with a way for these guys to cross over? So you get what I'm saying. They, it's been, it's been done, but like, I'm just excited to see more stuff coming out of Toho. This is just my side thoughts. I also want to quickly note here that we're apparently getting some sort of m new Godzilla anime, uh, which looks really promising. I'm into the characters. Uh, it's not as heavily 3D as the last Godzilla animes we got. Uh, it's not supposed to be connected to those from what I understand. It's supposed to be its own thing. Uh, so I'm pretty positive about this. I, I think it could be a good time. I mean, plus we're getting kind of a throwback to Jet Jaguar. So already it's kind of got my vote. But anyways, I'll conclude this by doing a very fast recap on the best home video releases of this entire series and a quick top 10 of my favorite Godzilla films. So let's get into that. So first up is the Showa period, which is potentially the easiest to collect for, but also potentially the most confusing. And what I mean by that is you can get all of the movies in the current Criterion book box collection thing. Um, so that's a pretty easy one-stop shop. However, as mentioned in the past, a good chunk of those movies are in Japanese only. So if that's something that bothers you, then you're also gonna need to pick up from classic media, Godzilla Raids Again, Godzilla vs. Mothra, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, uh, Godzilla's Revenge or All Monsters Attack. And then you'll also have to pick up from Kraken versus the Sea Monster versus the Smog Monster and versus Gigan. Now, if for some reason you can't get a hold of the Criterion Collection or you just don't want to, then what I'd recommend is getting the old classic media box set like the one I have. Plus, you'll have to pick up King Kong vs. Godzilla, which you'll only be able to really get in English only. Um, then the three from Kraken that I mentioned previously, so versus the Smog Monster, versus the Sea Monster, and versus Gigan. Um, you'll then want to pick up Destroy All Monsters and Megalon on Blu-ray. Then you'll have to get the 50th anniversary DVDs of Son of Godzilla and Versus Mega Godzilla. And that would get you pretty much covered. Now for the Heisei period, I'd say grab the Kraken 1984 Godzilla, especially now while it's still cheap. And then snag the Sony Toho Blu-rays of the rest of them. The hardest one to find in this series is going to be Godzilla vs. Biollante, which if you're lucky enough to come across it, try to get the one that comes with the features instead of the one that comes with the bonus movies. For the Millennium Era, again, just pick up the Sony Toho Blu-rays. The DVDs are cheaper, but the Blu-rays come with English and Japanese versions, so if that doesn't matter, you can get the DVDs, but if it does, for consistency's sake, go with the Blu-rays. The current Godzilla era is pretty standard. There's not a whole lot of variants there, uh, unless you want to try to get like the Japanese box sets. And now for my top 10 favorite Godzilla films. Disclaimer though, I'm gonna do this and not include the original. Why, you may ask? Because it would be obviously number one. Everybody knows this. In any list ever, if someone's doing the top 10 Godzilla films, obviously the original is number one. So let's just all agree, this is the best Godzilla film ever. Hands down, love it. If you have to see only one in your life, go see that one. Now, that out of the way, here's my top 10. Number 10, Godzilla vs. Megalon. Now, hear me out here. Arguably, Godzilla vs. Megalon could be considered the worst Godzilla movie ever made. Well, I mean, that's a lie. It's just one of the worst Godzilla films ever made. But to me, I find it's got its charm. I think it's quite funny, especially in a group setting. And I mean, you can't deny how awesome Jet Jaguar is. So for that reason alone, it made my list at number 10 spot. Number 9, Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster. Now, this is another one of those situations where arguably this could have been higher on the list, but there's a few factors that I never quite enjoyed about this movie. Uh, the talent show sequence is very bizarre to me, and I, I never was too crazy about the whole possessed alien princess aspects, but you can't deny how cool Ghidorah is. I mean, Ghidorah is one of my favorite Godzilla foes of all time, and this is his first appearance. Uh, and in this, I mean, Godzilla needs to team up in order to take him down. So you get some good monster brawls in here with all three other monsters in it. 
Number eight, Godzilla vs. Ghidorah. Obviously Ghidorah wasn't going to appear only once on this list, and this is another really fun movie. I mean, I've already talked about it in a little bit of greater detail, but like just the the amount of stuff in this. I mean, you time travel, killer robots, uh, you know, adorable Dorats. I mean, like, you get it all. And I mean, one conjo conjoined word sums up how awesome this is, and that's Mecha King Ghidorah. A must see, in my opinion. Number seven, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. Easily another classic. This has the makings of everything you want in a great movie. I mean, we've got evil imposters going on. Uh, we've got some really killer monster fights happening. Uh, some really stellar music, I gotta say. And I mean, you get some space apes, so you get a nice balance of everything. Uh, the King Caesar bits are a bit weird, but hey, I love this overall. Number six, King Kong versus Godzilla. This is one of those movies that I refer to as a perfect drive-in movie because it it just doesn't take itself too serious but it still has this kind of like strong sensational vibe to it it feels like an event i can't really explain it but i get the same feelings as i got whenever i first saw the enchanted tiki room because it's like a clear window into the time period when it came out plus i mean all that aside you have two of the biggest pop culture monsters clashing for the first time ever. Overall, it's just extremely charming, just to say the least. Number five, Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack. Still a mouthful, but still wildly worth it. This movie is awesome. I can't say it enough. I just love the vibes of it. it like it's such a different take on the character that it easily sticks out from the rest of the series for me at least. I mean Godzilla is just really terrifying in this. Uh Ghidorah their use of him here is so wild that I, I can't get enough of it. Highly highly recommend checking it out. Number 4. Godzilla against Mecha Godzilla. Now, some would argue that this movie serves as more of a setup for its sequel, but I genuinely think that the story and characters of this are so good that it can stand on its own. Uh, I love the new backstory to Mecha Godzilla in this, and his design, as I've mentioned, is my favorite of all of the Mecha Godzilla designs. It's got some excellent action scenes and some really good character interactions. So it, for me, it's high up there. Number three, Tokyo SOS. I mean, it's no shock here. If I enjoyed the tone of the previous movie, then obviously I'm gonna enjoy its sequel. And to me, Tokyo SOS is one of those sequels that takes the concepts of the original and just adds on to it. So it's not just a dry repeat or a mindless moving forward. I mean, a highlight for me is they're introducing Mothra in this one. So you're getting a lot of really cool throwbacks to that character, a lot of really excellent action set pieces, which I know I keep saying, but really, it, it outdoes itself in this. And the music cues are phenomenal. So yeah, I say perfect double feature with the last movie. Number two, Shin Godzilla. This is another situation where I like this for how different it is from the series, but at the same time, it's also returning to its original roots with how anti-nuclear it is and all the social commentary it includes in it. Plus, on a more superficial level, I just really like the creativity in the different stages of Godzilla. So it's very different, but has that old classic flavor to it. So, you know, best of both worlds, in my opinion. Number one. Godzilla vs. Mothra. To me, if you're gonna watch any other Godzilla besides the original, this is the one to watch. Not only is it one of the first in-color Godzilla films, it also kind of serves as a bridge between the serious and the campy Godzilla films that would immediately follow it. While the first is more about the immediate impact of nuclear disaster, this more feels like how Earth responds to that kind of damage. But all of that is just pleasantly surrounded by the perfect levels of levity. It's just a very entertaining watch and I can't recommend it enough. And that about wraps it up. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you found this informative as well as entertaining. 
And uh, I doubt this will be the last time I talk about Godzilla, but to be honest, I'm kind of glad to have it out of the way as it took way longer than I thought it would, but nevertheless was very fun to do. If you enjoyed these videos, don't forget to subscribe and check out some of the other stuff that Jex and I do. We just love talking about movies and music and all kinds of different pop culture stuff. Also, don't forget to join our Discord. Uh, if you don't already have Discord, it's free to download and sign up for. It's basically just an open chat where you can talk to Jex and me about different, you know, music or movies or whatever you feel like chatting about. Uh, and connect with other people that also like to talk about movies or music. So, hey, feel free to join it. But anyways, thanks again, guys. Later. Later.